Hello and welcome to the garden today. The Brussels sprouts that I snapped the flowering tops off of, how are they getting on? So the plant that had its top snapped off before it started going to seed has actually got lots more leafy bits sprouting out the sides and is doing really well. Sprouts that had already started going to seed, putting on little flower buds, when I snapped its top off, all its little sprouty bits also started flowering. So I've harvested them and snapped most of them off and had them for lunch. Now if we get in and take a closer look at the top of the plant, at these little leaf joints, it's starting to put out new buds of growth. I'm hoping they're going to be lots of delicious new young leaves. And as for the red cabbage that had its heart ripped out, <laughs> lots of tufts of lovely new leafy growth. So here's my tray of perennial seedlings I put in about February, I think, if I remember rightly. And some things are coming up really good, like this sedum here, really thick and heavy. But these are also sedums in these two rows. <coughs> Nothing. Different varieties of sedum. So although I've had two no-shows on these sedums, maybe there's time they might still show up. This Emperor's Wave sedum is doing really well. I'm going to have plenty of that and lots of Veronica Grandis, which is wonderful. So this is getting really thick and dense. I'm going to separate them out today and give them their own little pot. And this is another Veronica next to it. This is Veronica Longifolia doing okay but I haven't had as much germination or maybe I had less seeds to start with but I suspect it's germination. I can't be filming this tray without showing you the geranium madarensis that's doing splendidly and a little baby one. Oh, can we see it there we go at the back putting on its true leaves now so I've mixed up some compost I've got multi-purpose compost and vermiculite ready to pot them into. My first little pot of Veronica Grandis. Where are we? There. Now take its pot off and then very gently teasing them apart. There's one. Another one. Oh. It's delicate with that one. I'll put these to the side a second. Hmm. I'll take some of that out. I'm going to do this little delicate one first. His roots in, just holding gently by the leaves and scatter compost in around it, sprinkling it in gently and then just firming it down a little and straighten him up a bit. That's going to be my first one. Are we in shot? Yes. <laughs> this one. Try and keep as much compost with it as I can. Pop him in, just holding on to that leaf. I gently pour compost in around it. And again, using my thumbs to just firm it in. And one more for a moment. Compost in the bottom. This one came with the biggest lump of compost. It's also got lots of little tiny seeds. I'm going to leave them with it. Drop 
pop it in. There we go. Push my excess compost out of the way. Separate a few more seedlings. These are really tightly bunched together. Oh, wiggling the root structure. No, nope, these don't want to come apart. Very delicately teasing them out. There we go, got one. Here we go. Yeah. So, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine transplants. So from a crowded pot of Veronica seedlings, I now have nine individual little plants. These bigger ones are looking good. Tiny ones have got a bit of catching up to do. So I started with four pots of Veronica seedlings. I'm not going to transplant all of them into new pots today. I'm going to leave this pot because it's quite reasonably spaced at the moment because sort of half a pot really busy and half a pot with not much in it and if I have any major failures here at least I have a bit of a backup still doing quite nicely and healthy this pot though is getting very overcrowded so I'm definitely going to repot them on to individual pots of their own now my two pots of seedlings have become lots of pots of seedlings I'm going to give them a good drink to recover from all that root disturbance. And four days later, they're all doing well. Last time I saw you, I was potting up some Veronica seedlings. I'm happy to say they're all doing very nicely and settling into their new pots. Looking nice and strong and healthy. It's such a rough ordeal for them, but they all seem to have come through strong and healthy. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be planting my overwintered dahlia tubers. It is early April and we're safely past our last frost date. It's possibly a little bit early to be putting them in but we're forecast three beautiful days of sunshine and that will certainly warm up the soil temperatures. Unfortunately, after our three days of sun, we're back to our regular rainy wet weather, which will at least water them in nicely. I'm going to put my biggest tubers in on this side of the bed. And my smaller ones in over there because this is the direction the sun goes in. And I don't want my taller, bigger plants to be overshadowing the smaller varieties. So let's get digging. As you can hear, we've got another windy day. It's still nice and warm out in the sunshine though. Don't worry, I'll come and pick you up. Well, it may be a sunny day, it's a windy day as well.
So getting in close to this one, just as I'm about to plant it, I can see it's already starting to sprout. So it's definitely time to be getting them in the ground. a thought for anyone that's not been here before. This is an example of one of my overwintered Delia tubers and I'm planting it with just the soil covering the tubers and this is last year's growing stem and I'm going to leave that sticking out of the ground so just enough soil to cover it to here. This was the position it was growing in last year when I dug it up so I'm going to replant it at this depth of soil. them too close together. I'm hoping to shade out any weeds that want to grow in these new flowering places. So that's it, all the dahlias planted into this bed. That's not true. I've still got about 10 or 12 little tiny tubers that haven't gone in yet. I'm going to plant them into pots just to start them off and give me a chance to decide where I want to plant them. I've put all my big daily tubers into here and filled in any gaps with little ones. So this bed is now completely packed with dahlias. Now another problem I can foresee having is the fact I've got my new garden beds and old grassland is my path. Now this is not nice, lovely, well-behaved lawn grass. This is heavy duty grazing grass. There's a tough old beast that's going to want to migrate into my nice new planting spaces the minute they're not covered. Covering the grassy paths with wood chip and mulch is just too expensive to consider, or certainly at the moment. And again, because I'm making quite a few new beds, covering quite a large space, putting a bordered edge around them to separate my grass from my growing space would be cost prohibitive. So for this year I'm going to experiment. I've created this foot wide, foot high hill of grass around the edge of my garden bed. Soily planting space inside the bed and grassy path outside. Now this will mulch down, decompose and disappear into the ground. But I've got lots of grassy path I can cut and pile back on. So I'm hoping this will create enough of a barrier to stop this strong tough meadow grass working its way back into my new flowery beds. But hopefully I've given it a really good start. Cardboard down, thick grass on top and left for six months. Once my dahlias start coming up, nice and clearly, a good six inches or more above the soil, I'll be able to come back in here again, take out any weeds and put down a covering of mulch. 
Now I haven't added anything extra to this soil this year so far. No blood, fish and bone, no fertilisers, no extra compost. It's just the original base soil that I was starting with. And last year's top dressing of grassy mulch. That's all been munched up by the worms and taken into the soil. So I may find when I come and do that first weeding, I'll give it a sprinkling of blood, fish and bone as well before I add any mulch on top. Just to give those plants an extra feed. Now up in the polytunnel, I have a few dahlia plants that I've already put in pots. Let's go and see how they're doing. Here's the little tubers I have left over. I'm going to pot these into pots. They're not very big. Give them a bit of a head start this season. I expect they're smaller dahlia varieties, which is why the tubers haven't got big. They never will. This is just the size they grow. So here are the dahlias I put into pots a couple of weeks ago. I bought three dahlia tubers from the shops and they're all sprouting really nicely. Where's the other one gone? Oh, there, little tiny one at the front. And along the shelf, I've got my own dahlias that I potted up at the same time. They seem to be a little bit behind. This one's doing really well but they are all germinating. If we come in really close, there's a tiny little shoot down here. And the same on this one. Where's the camera? There we go. This one's got a little side shoot. This one. Over here, I had to do a little bit of a dig around, but there is actually a tiny little shoot just popping up here at this side. So they're all alive and they're all growing. To add to these, I've been daft enough to also plant some dahlia seeds this year. Newly germinated dahlia seedlings, sitting by a sunny window. I've had about 50% germination so far, but I'm going to treat them like annuals. Grow them this year, put them in the ground, enjoy their flowers. And if they get killed off in the winter, it's absolutely fine. I can always plant more seeds next year if I want to. So bye for now and we'll see you next time. Remember, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it. If you've enjoyed today's video, click that like button and let me know. Click subscribe and YouTube will make sure you see my next video. Bye for now and thanks for watching. And remember, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it.